Well, good morning, everybody. It's a, uh, a bright, cloudless sky here in Hutton. And the sun's shining. So it's a good morning. As well as being a god morning. The only uh, notices we've got is the 31st of January, which is the fifth Sunday. It's going to be different just to get you out of your routines and make sure you're awake. So keep, uh, keep an ear open and an eye open for what's going to happen. There'll be no nine o'clock Zoom, it'll be different. There'll be no six o'clock soap, it'll be different. So it'll be different, different. So watch out for what's going to happen. You will enjoy it. Start this morning with a, with a quote from Brother Lawrence. May I serve you in every moment and make my whole life a prayer. Thank you, Lucy and David. It's a good start to the day. I catch BTM. <laughs> hey. Zoom will never be the same again. So Lord, be with us now as we come to worship you. Be with us as we do our best to worship you. Thank you, Lord. So we go into some sung worship.
faith can move the mountains let the mountains move we come with expectation waiting here for you waiting here for you So can we say this invitation to Jesus together? Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us throughout this and every day. Come close to us that we may come close to you. Forgive us that we may forgive one another and renew us so that where we have failed, we may begin again. Amen. So we're going to come to our Bible reading now, which uh, Pamela Ann's going to read for us. The reading this morning 
Education from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading at verse 14 to verse 20. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. The first disciples. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they, fi they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Thanks be to God. And over to Jean for this morning's word. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We pray, Lord, that you would take the words you've given me, but speak your words to our hearts and minds and give us grace to respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our theme today is calling of the first disciples and specifically today our call to follow. I don't think that Jesus calling the first four disciples came totally out of the blue. He'd been around in their area and they would have seen him and heard his preaching. He must have been the talk of the neighborhood. His message was this, it is time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in its fullness. Turn your lives back to God and put your trust in the hope-filled gospel. This is the challenge of Jesus' call to us too, to experience God's kingdom in its fullness. I don't know about you, but for me, that is a call worth responding to. I don't experience God's kingdom in all its fullness yet, but I certainly want to make progress in that, and I hope you do too. We know from John's gospel that Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. John had recognized Jesus and pointed him out to his disciples with, look, the Lamb of God. Andrew then followed Jesus and spent a good part of a day with him. As a result, Andrew quickly found his brother Simon and introduced him to Jesus. So they had certainly made contact and were thinking about who Jesus was and what he was saying before this challenge to leave all and follow came. We can spe speculate that they would have talked about Jesus to James and John. So when the day came and they left everything to go with Jesus, James and John were willing to join Jesus too. So that can cause us to think, who has helped us in our journey of following Jesus by sharing what they know and pointing to Jesus as the one we need to follow? Whose example has been a signpost for us? Let's remember them with gratitude. Where would we be without them? All our Christian experiences so far have been preparation for the next step. All we have heard and learnt and seen has been preparing us for the next challenge. I'm sure that all of us have practiced following and being obedient so far, but what next? For these first four, what next was a radical choice. Jesus said, come and follow me, and they left everything. Andrew and Peter were given a hint of what they were getting into as Jesus said, 
I will transform you into men who catch people instead of fish. But apart from that, I don't suppose they knew what they were agreeing to. Nevertheless, they dropped their nets, abandoned their livelihood and followed. James and John left their father and their family business and followed Jesus too. As we consider our call to follow, my challenging word is choose. Our four had to make their choices. They heard Jesus, they listened, they saw what he did and how he lived, and then chose to risk everything and step out in faith to go with him. So what about us? What effect does what we hear or sense Jesus saying to us have on us? Other times when it's just words soon forgotten, or are we prepared for a choice of radical obedience? What is God saying and what am I going to do about it? What am I prepared to leave? What about you? Would it be the security of our home or our finances? What about our family or familiar situation or our comfort zone and settled lifestyle? Are we prepared for immediate obedience? Or do we procrastinate as some of Jesus's hearers did? Let me first go back and say goodbye to my family. Or I have other things I must do first, as in the parable of the wedding feast. I need to go and see a field I've just bought. I need to try out my new oxen. I've just got married, so I can't obey just now. One of my latest challenges is fasting. Listen to my procrastinating. Lord, that convicts with my efforts to control the irritable bowel syndrome I've struggled with for years with no lasting answer. Perhaps another time. The rich young ruler had something more important to him than following Jesus. His wealth was his idol. Jesus had hard words for procrastinators and excuse makers. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. He also said, if anyone comes to me and doesn't hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who doesn't carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Jesus has to come first. Here's a quote from Alan Hirsch that I found on Facebook. In the life of a disciple, the momentum of Jesus expresses itself as the call to unconditional discipleship. The four Gospels set the pattern for this in their many call narratives. If anyone wants to be involved with Jesus, or if Jesus takes the initiative to involve himself with anyone, this means for the disciple a choice of all or nothing. Discipleship is an indivi indivisible adherence which demands the whole existence and is marked with the brand of his ownership, not only in one place, but in all places. But there are rewards for following. Peter said to Jesus, we've left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields and with them persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. When I was quite a bit younger, I did some of this as a response to sending a call to come and follow. I left a secure, well-paid job to work voluntarily for Christchurch. Then the next step was leaving family, Christchurch and Bridlington to join youth with a mission in the Midlands with no paid income. Then on to leaving this country for times in Africa. But that was a long time ago. And I can ask myself now, is my life too comfortable now? What am I hearing in preparation for the next step of obedience? We're never too old or too limited by our circumstances or health problems that
that we can't respond to Jesus' call to follow him. What about you? Are you open to Jesus' challenge, hearing his call of come follow me and I will make you into something new, different and greater than you've known before? His call to these four was to something new and different, something beyond their previous experience, way beyond their abilities or comfort zones. That may be the same for us. It may well involve a process of personal renewal, rebuilding and restoration. Obedience may expose our shaky foundations, which need God's process of cleansing and rebuilding with God's truth and the Holy Spirit's grace and power. That will happen as we choose to step out in obedience, but it's not an excuse to avoid the call. Well, I'll wait until I feel secure and well prepared. It's not about being able to do things in our own limited wisdom, experience or strength. Alongside feeling that God is challenging us to choose, there is the prom promise of grace when we obey. As God said to Paul, my grace is always more than enough for you and my power finds it fu its full expression through your weakness. Another promise is, the one who calls you by name is trustworthy and will thoroughly complete his work in you. And Paul said, I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have, for I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. Our four enrolled in Jesus' school of ministry being prepared for what they would do after Jesus' resurrection and after Pentecost, when they will be taking God's kingdom into the world. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. What will God's kingdom in its fullness look like for us? What are we expecting? The four disciples left everything, all that they knew for the unknown. They got a closer walk with Jesus. They got to be with him, to fellowship with him, to hear him and learn from him, share in his ministry and become like him. What are we looking for if we want to experience God's kingdom in its fullness? I would like what the disciples got a closer walk with Jesus, to be closer to him, to fellowship with him, hear him more clearly, learn from him, share in his ministry and become more like him. I would like to see my prayers answered more frequently, people being saved and healed. I would like all that Jesus took for his mandate from Isaiah 61, sharing the good news, Seeing God set prisoners free, the spiritually or physically blind receiving sight, the oppressed released, and the broken-hearted comforted. How about you? That's what is on offer to us. Jesus challenges us because he loves us. He says, come, follow me. I don't think it, that it means that you should all prepare to go to Africa or Nepal or Cambodia. So what does it actually mean for us today? There is a significant and well-known other come that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Passion Version of that says, Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. 
for all that I require of you will be ple pleasant and easy to bear. I think that Jesus would say to us that his come and follow me includes come into the place of prayer as he did. Following him means developing that habit of prayer as he did. When you don't know what to pray, the spirit will help you by interceding for you and in you. Learn to pray in the spirit. Come and spend quality time with Father God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Worship him. Learn to be still and know that he is God. Make time for him. Come and learn from him by studying his word and meditating upon it. Come and receive the freedom and healing that his truth will give you. Come learn to listen to Father God's heart so that you see what he's doing and hear what he's saying. Then you can do those things that Jesus did and even greater things in the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, come, follow me. And our response, each one of us today has to be, what will I choose to do? What will you choose to do? So let's pray. Holy Spirit, please give us ears to hear the call of Jesus to follow him. Hearts and minds that are willing to respond with obedience and wills that are committed to follow through on our choices. We ask this in Jesus name and for his glory. Amen. 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 We're going to worship God again in song. I'm undone by your holiness in the light of your holiness. I'm undone. By your holiness, send me, Lord. Letting go of my selfishness, I repent of my selfishness. Letting go of my selfishness, send I 
Let my life be the evidence every breath. Be the evidence. Let my life be the evidence. Send me, Lord. I say, send me, Lord. Jesus, send me. Just a, a reminder that you'll need your bread and your juice shortly. So don't forget that. But this is the collect for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as you called your first disciples to follow you, may we listen to your voice as you speak to us. Draw us closer to you and equip us to follow you wherever you may lead us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I think we have our DVD on giving next.
It's about the giving of ourselves to God that uh, comes our desire to give, to give more, to give of our monetary and our personal service to serve God and his people. So it starts with those. So over to Jim or uh, Rosemary for today's prayers. It's Jim. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> when I was asked to lead the prayers today, uh, a very old hymn came to mind that reflects the calling of Jesus uh, to, uh, to the apostles and also our calling to follow Jesus. But it also reflects the difficult times that we're going through. The first verse starts, Jesus calls us all the tumult of our lives, wild, restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. So let us pray. Dear Lord, at this time of tumult, of stress and uncertainty, we pray that you would continue, that we would continue to listen to you, even when times seem so difficult, that we would listen for the still small voice of Jesus guiding us in our prayers and our actions as we serve him in this place, as he calls us to follow him. We pray for all the work that is going on in the Restore Ministry, for those in desperate need, both of the physical needs of daily life, of food and shelter, and the emotional needs of knowing that they are valued and understood. We pray for those in desperate need to find the joy and peace that comes from turning to you and knowing you as their Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the willingness of those called to work in the Restore team to serve you. And we pray that you will continue to show each one of us the part that we should play, whether in helping, donating, or just supporting them in prayer. We pray that you will empower the Restore team <clears throat> to use the opportunities that they have been given to share their faith with those that they serve. We pray for the different services happening across the network today. And even when we cannot meet together in person, we thank you, Lord, that we have the means to meet in other ways. We know that the network is not just the fellowships where we meet. Jesus calls us to be his disciples in our homes, our families and our neighbourhoods. We pray that others will see that there is something radically different about us as followers of Jesus, and they might want to know more about you for themselves. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us in our conversations and our actions, and that we will have the joy of knowing that we are each playing our part as we follow you. Verse four of the um, hymn says, in our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, Still he calls us in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. So in our times of joys and sorrows, we remember especially those who are unwell, physically or emotionally. We pray for those that we know who are in hospital at this time. And we remember all those caring for the sick and all those striving to provide the means to protect each one of us through vaccinations, especially the elderly and the vulnerable. We give thanks for those who are working so hard to produce and deliver the vaccine and those working cease ceaselessly to administer them. We have become so aware in the last few weeks of the stresses and pressures that many people are under. The NHS staff working in incredibly difficult and challenging situations, carers, teachers, parents doing homeschooling, all who never imagined that they would have to face such a time as this. We remember especially our politicians as they have to make difficult and life-changing decisions at this time and we pray that they may have godly wisdom in all that they do. We pray that all those working so hard to support this nation and the nations of the world through this difficult time will know your peace and we pray that you will strengthen and equip them as they carry out their work. 
and a prayer for peace. Father God, we pray that you will, by your Holy Spirit, help each one of us and those we love to find peace today and in the coming days. And I'm going to finish with the last verse of the hymn. Jesus calls us, by thy mercies, Saviour, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience, serve and love thee best of all. Amen. Thank you, Jim. We're now going to go into the Lord's Prayer. So we say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to now wave the peace at each other because we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. We are heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you, darling. And also with you. Peace be with you all. Let God's peace reign in your hearts. We're going to worship God again with another song. This I believe.
But I think the most important thing is we're sharing in the remembrance yeah. with each other Jesus, of what Jesus, Jesus has done watch his life and what Jesus wants to do in our lives today. And so as we remember, we call to mind this Last Supper, where among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and having blessed it. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. But afterwards, in the same way, he took wine. And having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. This was part of Jesus' declaration, part of his promise, and part of his life that he offers, and still offers to each one of us today. And so now, following Jesus' example, we take bread and wine, the ordinary things of the world, through which God will bless us. And as Jesus offered thanks for the gifts of the earth, we also celebrate God's goodness to each one of us today. So Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now, as we do in our homes, what you did in an upstairs room, breathe your spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that they may be heaven's food and drink for us, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole, and that we may be your body on earth, loving and caring in the world. So we acknowledge that the bread of heaven is broken for the life of the world. We share and eat this bread. We give thanks to God for his blood shared for each one of us. Thank you, Lord God, that these are your gifts, because we are your people. <coughs> so we thank you, God, for your presence with us, for your love, for us, for your promises made to us, and for the hope that we can have in you. So we praise you, Lord God, as we sing our final worship song in the midst of everything that happens. We still sing God's praises again.
So just a, a reminder that this week and next week, it's uh, Sunday soak and normal, services as normal. It's the 31st when it's different. Only the 31st is when it's different. So thank you to Jean, thank you to Jim, thank you to Claire, Pamela, Pamela Ann. <laughs> and thank you to everybody that's been with us. So God bless and we'll see you soon. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the look, Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and for all time. Amen. So see you at six o'clock. <laughs>